Welcome back to Teacher Net Explains channel. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and leave a comment. So by now, I guess, you already have understood how to combine rational expressions. That is, how to perform addition and subtraction of rational equations. So now, let's talk about how to multiply and divide rational expressions or rational equations. Let's have these examples. The first given is x minus 1 all over x times 3 over x minus 1 equals x minus 2 all over 4x. Now, same rules in multiplying simple fractions apply to multiplication of rational expressions. Again, we may eliminate denominators by multiplying both sides by the LCV. Now, note that the left side is only one term. Since the operation between x minus 4 all over x and 3, 3 over x minus 1 is multiplication. Okay? And their denominators is a product of x and x minus 1. Next. On the right side, the denominator is 4x. And 4x is the product of 4 and x. Now again, in getting the LCD, we consider the prime factors of the denominators. And as you can see, x is a common factor or of both sides of the denominators or of both denominators on, on both sides. Then we will just consider it once in getting the LCD. As the LCD is 4x times x minus 1. Okay? And recall that in solving rational equations, just like what we did in addition and subtraction, after getting the LCD, we multiply both sides of the rational equation by the derived LCD. And same thing we will do this time. So let's rewrite the given. So multiply both sides of the rational equation by the derived LCD. Okay. Note that this is one term or monomial. This, this term. This is one term only, as what I said earlier, and hence, distributive property will not apply. You cannot distribute 4x times x minus 1 to each of these. Okay, to each of these terms, since this is a monomial. Now, what we're going to do is to proceed to cancellation. Okay, x divided by x is 1, and x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 is 1. So, what's left is 4 times 3 times x minus 4 equals 4x divided by 4x is 1. So, what's left is x minus 2 times x minus 1. Now, 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times the quantity of x minus 4. Hence, we'll distribute 12 to x into negative 4. 12 times x is 12x. And 12 times negative 4 is negative 48. Now, we're going to multiply a binomial by another binomial. And just like what we did before, we're going to distribute each of these terms to the terms of the second factor. So, x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative x or negative 1x. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. And negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. And then by APE, we have 12x minus 48 minus x squared plus x plus 2x minus 2 equals 0. Now, we will combine like terms. Since there are no other terms with x squared other than negative x squared, so we'll just copy it. And take note, always include the sign, whether it is negative or positive. Now, like terms are 12x, positive x, and positive 2x. Let's combine them. 12x plus x is 13x plus 2x is 15x, positive 15x. Like terms are, another set of like terms are negative 48 and negative 2 since they are both constants. Negative 48 minus 2 is negative 50. Since they have the same sign, so add them and then copy the common sign, which is negative. Okay? We now have a trinomial. Now, suppose we would like to make 
the constant constant negative 1 of x squared become positive 1. Suppose we would like to make it positive 1. Hence, what we're going to do is to multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1. Okay, so let's rewrite it first. Multiply both sides by negative 1. And then distribute negative 1 to each of the terms inside the parentheses. On the left side, when you distribute negative 1, the trinomial will become x squared minus 15x plus 50 equals any number multiplied by 0 is 0. Okay? So, as you can notice, when you multiply a term by negative 1, you just change the sign. All negatives become positive and all positives become negative. Okay? Now, x squared minus 15x plus 50 is a perfect square trinomial. So, when you factor it out, you're expecting to have two binomials as its factors. And in factoring it, first, you have to look at the first term. It's positive x squared and its factors are x and x. You have to write its factors as first terms of the binomials. Okay? first terms. Next, look at the last term. It's positive 50. Think of factors of 50. You may have, you may consider 5 times 10. And 5 and 10, factors of the last term of the trinomial, is the second term or are the second terms of the two binomials. Okay? How about the sign? Since it's positive 50, we're expecting that signs of 5 and 10 are the same. It can either be both positive or both negative. To decide, we have to look at the sign of the middle term. It's negative 15x. It's negative. Hence, both should be negatives. Okay? When you check it, when you distribute x, okay, x to the terms of, to each of the terms of the second factor, and when you distribute negative 5 to each of the terms of the second factor, you'll arrive at this trinomial. Okay. So, the factors of x squared minus 15x plus 50 are really x minus 5 and x minus 10. And then, by zero product property, you have to separate them. You have to equate both factors to zero. And then, you have to solve for the values of x. By APE, we have x equals 5 and x equals 10. Okay? So, we assume that these two are the solutions of, um, of the given rational equation. But still, we have to check whether they really are both solutions or whether there will be an extraneous rule. So, let's check. If really values of x are 5 and 10. So, let's check first for x equals 5. So, let's substitute 5 to all x's of the given. We have 5 minus 4 over 5. Okay, and then let's solve. 5 minus 4 is 1 fifth. And then 3 over 5 minus 1 is 4. Equals 5 minus 2 is 3 over 4 times 5 is 20. Let's put question marks since we're not sure whether they are equal. And then 1 times 3 is 3 over 5 times 4 is 20 equals 3 over 20. Okay, they are really equal. Therefore, x minus 5 is really a solution to the given rational equation. Next, let us check whether x equals 10 is a solution or whether 10 is a solution also. So, let's substitute 10 to all x's of the given. Just like what we did with x equals 5. Okay, let's solve. 10 minus 4 is 6 over 10 times 3 over 9. We're not yet sure whether they're equal. 8 over 4 times 10 is 40. Okay, let's do the cancellation. 3 over 9 is equal to 1 over 3. Since when you divide them both by 3, it will become 1 over 3. And then 6 over 10, when you divide them both by, let's say, 2, it will become 3 over 5. 
and then you may can cancel 3 and 3 since 3 divided by 3 is 1. Okay? And then for 8 over 40, they're both divisible by 8 and the fraction will become 1 over 5. So 1 times 1 is 1 over 5 equals 1 fifth also. So we have proven that 5 and 10 are solutions to the rational equations. x equals 5 and x plus 10. Now, next given, we have 1 over x minus 1 divided by x minus 3 all over 2 equals x minus 2 all over x minus 1. Now, this involves division of rational expressions and rules on division of simple fractions apply to it. Hence, we reciprocate the second fraction and proceed to multiplication. That is 1 over x minus 1 times 2 all over x minus 3 equals x minus 2 all over x minus 1. Okay? Again, let us eliminate the denominators by multiplying both sides by the LCD. So, let's get the LCD. Now, since all the denominators cannot be factored out anymore, then that is, the LCD is their product. But since x minus 1 is a common factor of both sides, then we will just consider it once. So that is, LCD equals the product of x minus 1 and of x minus 3. Okay? And then again, we have to multiply both sides of the rational equation by the LCD. So we have 1 over x minus 1 times 2 over x minus 3. Okay? x minus 3 is equal to x minus 2 all over x minus 1. Multiply both sides by the LCD x minus 1 times the quantity x minus 3. Okay, now, let's apply the cancellation. Let's apply cancellation. So, we can, we may cancel x minus 1 and x minus 1. Since x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 is 1, x minus 3 divided by x minus 3 is 1 also. So, what's left is 1 times 2. And 1 times 2 is 2. Equals. So, x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 is 1. And what's left is the product of the binomials x minus 2 and x minus 3. Okay, let's copy 2 equals. Then, this is product of binomials, of two binomials. So, again, we have to distribute each of the terms of the first factor to each of the terms of the second factor. So, we have x times x is x squared x times negative 3 is negative 3x, negative 2 times x is negative 2x, and negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. Okay? And then, that is, we may combine first like terms on the right side. So, x squared, and then we may combine negative 3x with negative 2x. Negative 3x minus 2x is negative 5x plus now, by APE, we have x squared minus 5x plus 6 minus 2. And by combining like terms, we have x squared minus 5x plus 4, since, since 6 minus 2 is 4. Now, by reflexive property, The reflexive property of equality, we may rewrite it this way. x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals 0. Okay? And then, we may factor it out. Again, it's a perfect square trinomial. So, the process will just be like what we did in the first example. Factor out the first term. Factors are x and x. Factor out the last term, which is 4. And factors can either be 2 times 2 
or 4 and 1. And then you may do the trial and error. So suppose I would like to have to take 4, the factors 4 and 1. Now, what will be the signs of 4 and 1? Since it's positive, then they have they should have same signs. And then look at the sign of the middle term, it's negative. So both of them should be negative. And then by zero product property, we have to equate both the factors to zero. And then solve them. By APE, we have x equals 4 and x equals 1. Okay? Now, we are not yet sure whether they are both solutions to the, to the original um, rational equations. All we have to do is to check first because we'd like to see, we would like to see whether there is an extraneous root. So, let's check. Okay? So, what we have solved are x equals 4 and x equals 1. Let's check then. So, if x equals 4, let's substitute 4 to all x's of the given. Divided by, or suppose you would like to have, to take um, this one. When you already reciprocate the divisor. Okay. So let's erase this. And then, so 1 over 4 minus 1 times 2 over 4 minus 3. Will that be equal to 4 minus 2? all over 4 minus 1. So 1 over 4 minus 1 is 3. And then 2 over 4 minus 3 is 1. Will that be equal to 4 minus 2? 2 over 3? Okay. So we may cancel out these ones. And what will be left on the left side is 2 thirds equals 2 thirds. Therefore, x equals 4 is really a solution to the, to the given rational equation. How about x equals 1? So we have 1 over 1 minus 1 times 2 over 1 minus 3 equals 1 minus 2 all over 1 minus 1. Okay? So 1 over 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay, now look at this. This cannot be because, as you can recall, our definition of a rational expression is that the denominator should not be equal to zero. So, so this cannot be. But still, let us solve. Let's whether uh, let's see um, later on what will happen. So, what min one minus three is negative two equals one minus three is negative one. One minus one is zero. Again, it's zero. The denominator is zero on the right side. And when you multiply um, 1 over 0 and 2 over negative 2, it will be equal to 2 over 0. So again, the denominator is 0, which cannot be. Therefore, x equals 1 or 1 is an extraneous root. It cannot be a root of the given rational equation. So, 4 is only the solution to the given rational equation. Hope you have learned how to multiply and divide rational equations. Until next time!